Welcome to another episode of Out of the Pods. I'm Deep T. And I'm Natalie. And this is our last recap episode of Love is Blind Season 7. And I'm not going to lie, I'm not sad about it. I'm, I'm not, not sad about it. I'm, I'm excited for it to be over. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I had a lot of emotions from the reunion. And- yeah, but it left me unsatisfied. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't every reunion leave us unsatisfied? If I don't I'm know. Being I feel like season six was pretty good. I mean, obviously, I don't have very high expectations for these Love is Blind reunions. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's always feedback for Nick and Vanessa, like how they could improve as hosts, all these things. And like, you know, about how production doesn't address, you know, certain hot topics. So I'm not surprised that most viewers are saying like this was a lackluster reunion. But it wasn't the worst one. Nick and Vanessa only have so much control over what is said at reunion. They're wearing a mic and they're getting fed certain things. If couples are like fighting, they're like, end it now, like cut that off or let them talk about it. So it's like they're getting direction from the showrunners. So So I don't think the blame can be put on them. They're just trying to. Again, like Deepti said, follow instructions. They have um, production in their ear. So they're wearing a um a earpiece and they're not the ones coming up with the questions i think beyond just like funny lines or them reacting to something those questions are from (laughs) production and they're really just the mouthpiece well before we get into it because there's a lot we're gonna have to get into i was talking to deep d about this like before we press the record button but (laughs) i have a new friend that i met through influencer events here in chicago And when I first met this friend, I really, really liked her. I was like, oh my gosh, she's so funny. You know, we're similar. Um, I thought she was laid back. Mm -hmm. Like when we were hanging out at the influencer event I initially met her at, she was kind of this like go with the flow type of person or so Mm -hmm. I thought. And then I got to know her really well. And I realized like how judgy she is. Like worse than me. I know I come (laughs) off judgy on this podcast, but typically in like real life, I I like really don't care what like other people do beyond like watching reality TV. But this friend does where, for example, um, she wrote on her Instagram story about how her other friend moved into a new place. Mm hmm. And so my friend brought over a housewarming gift and she was offended because her friend didn't take her coat and hang it up immediately when my friend walked in the door. That's right. And she was like, that is just so rude. Like that is just bad manners. Like you should absolutely like take your guests coats and hang them up immediately when they come over. And I was like, that's so stupid to like harp on. No, that's a really weird, like very specific thing. Yeah. (laughs) Like it's almost like she's looking for things to hate on. I know. Like that's not correct. And she's like asking on her Instagram story for other people's opinions. And uh, I mean, were you honest in the opinion? (laughs) I didn't say anything because I typically kind of like stay out of it. But in my head, I was like, if I had moved into a new place and you came over, I'm sorry, but I want to think twice about taking your coat. I'd just be like, throw it somewhere. No, 100%. And if <laughs> or anything, hang it up I'm, yourself. I'm there to help you or like, yeah. I mean, yes, I would probably take your coat, but you know what no, I'm saying? You, if, if like, you it wouldn't matter. Yeah, it wouldn't matter. Exactly. Like, I would never even think twice. Exactly. If I even came over to your house and you didn't take yeah. my coat, like, I would just be like, whatever. You didn't even think, you wouldn't even think about it. Yeah, I'd probably be like, where do or, I put my coat? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can I throw it on this chair? <laughs> I just take it off and I'll like yeah. put it on some random chair. <laughs> Literally. But you know, I think as I get older, I want friends who are easygoing and don't like aren't so high strung about those things. No, I completely agree. And I think I've been meeting a lot of people through friends of friends, you know, yeah. and like you just show up at a house party and then there's, you know, friends there that I have no idea. Who they are. <laughs> and I'm like, you can tell so easily who matches your vibe totally and who doesn't. And the top of the list of people that I do not want to surround myself with is people who complain about things in life or like just always find an issue with somebody or something around them, you know? Yeah, I think that was my thing because I was like, I'm so comfortable around, obviously, you, but my other friends. Mm -hmm. So after I saw that Instagram story, I went over to her house like a few weeks later. She Mm -hmm. had this like dinner party and I was so tense, like as if I didn't want to mess up. Like I was like, okay, I got to bring flowers, but maybe I'll also (laughs) bring like a bottle of wine and, you know, a (laughs) card. And 
you know, like immediately when I walk in, I'm, yeah. you know, gonna try to be as perfect as possible so she doesn't judge me and her friends don't judge me. When I went home, I was like, what the heck? Like, what kind of friendship is that? Yeah, Where I'm like also, so tense. You shouldn't be scared to be on like a, a story and like yeah. about an action you did yeah. <laughs> accidentally or yeah. Yeah, no, that's uh, really frustrating. And also like, why would you want a high strung anxiety ridden friend? Yeah, you know? or that type of friendship where you're yeah. like scared to be judged by your friend. Yeah, no, 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 no. Dude, yeah, we're too old for that. I, <laughs> I know. I can't believe like in a couple in January, it's almost the new year, but I'm gonna be 34 years old. Wow. I've been thinking about that a lot lately and I'm like, holy crap. Look, I really think that 34 is the new 24. <laughs> Thank you. Okay? I think so too. I think it's the new 25 though, you know? Yeah, but yeah. Maybe um, maybe like 29. <laughs> but you know, my mentality is, oh my gosh, three and four add up to seven and I love the number seven. <laughs> oh. I thought you'd get a kick out of that. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, I feel like we already talked about this with our pod besties. Anytime it turns like 11, 11, <laughs> 2, 22 p.m., I got a text from Deep D. Dude, I do this all the time. She goes, it's, it's 11, 11. And I was like, okay, and, well, and it's <laughs> going to be 11, 12 in a this minute. This is <laughs> actually kind of crazy of me, but I talk to the universe and I'm doing that in quotes, but like, I feel like our spirit guides are always with us. And Who's that? Like just ancestors of ours, like energy. I don't know. It's just all around us. Well, okay. Some, can I talk to my ancestors? Because you're leading me in a fucking path. You okay? can literally talk to you. It's too That's That's life. Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> can you try to make it smoother? <laughs> I'm tired. I do this all the time though. And I ask my spirit guides or like whoever's watching over me to be mm -hmm. like, give me signs that I am doing the right thing when it comes to this decision. And I'll be like, I want to see like ladybugs everywhere or I want to see something like something and I swear to you there was a ladybug on my car the other day Wait, I really no see I'm serious I've never seen a ladybug in Chicago oh that's funny because there's a ladybug infestation right now <laughs> did you see this you know I also don't really go outside so <laughs> you were just outside this morning <laughs> oh yeah so actually this morning I watched the reunion and I had to take a walk and I called Deep D and I was like, I'm so frustrated at what I saw that I just need to cool off. I'm so dead. That's yeah, this reunion was very frustrating. Well, we should get into it. But before we do, I just wanted to say happy Diwali to all of our pod besties and you. Um, even though if you guys don't celebrate it, obviously, but the Vali is like my favorite holiday because it is basically the triumph of like light over darkness, love over evil and like knowledge over ignorance, which is a lot of what we'll get into in this reunion. Too bad. Like the opposite happened during this reunion. No, literally. like evil triumph delight. <laughs> <laughs> the other day, this is so funny. I had my mom tell me and she tells me the story all the time about why we celebrate the Vali. But I was like, mom, give me like the gossip session style of why. And she told me this entire drama of like why we celebrate it. And like the backstory and history. Yeah, like the backstory okay. and history of why the Valley is what it is. And Can you share it? Because I actually don't know. It's like... <laughs> It's a long ass story. Okay. Well, I was gonna spare you the details, but it's a it's a pretty long story. Give me like the two minute version. Okay. Okay. Here's a fun summary. So basically, back we'll put timestamps so you guys can skip this. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? No, listen. It's a fun story. No. Okay. So basically, back in the day, there was a king, and back in that time, there was polygamy still. So he mm -hmm. had three wives. So from the three wives, he had four sons. And all of them are actually like super loving. There's no animosity, no jealousy. Amongst and the sons. Amongst the sons and the wives, which wow. is lovely. But what happens is one of the maids that is working for the youngest wife is like putting things in her ear, kind of planting seeds saying, your son isn't going to get anything. Like the firstborn is the one who's going to inherit everything. He's going to become king and your son will be forgotten. And so the wife- That's every youngest kid. What do you mean? <laughs> no, the youngest kid is the most loved. You don't have a but middle. But you're the middle child. Yeah, so the middle child is way forgotten. Actually, that's so true. You don't exist. No, you're like I, the black sheep. No, 100%. I'm like the most forgotten person in the entire world. <laughs> Which is why this story is so heartwarming. No, I'm just kidding. So, okay. Now this wife is like, 
okay, now I need to talk to the king and figure out how to put my son first. And so she goes and talks to the king and is like, hey, I'm having issues with the way the hierarchy is. And the king is so nice to her. And he's like, I'll grant you any wish whenever you want. And she goes, I will when the time is right. Mm. So then years pass by. This drama is so good. (laughs) The original drama of India. (laughs) Um, So then what happens is the time comes of the king ceremony, like crowning the next king. And so then the wife comes and is like, my wish, like I have my wish now. And she tells him, I want to ban the first son, Rama. I want to ban him from the kingdom for 14 years. And the king is like, okay. Oh, he grants her the wish. Yeah. So that he can't get crowned king. And so the king is like, I just have to figure out a way to tell the, t- to tell him. And tell Rama. To tell Rama. He goes to his son and he's like, you're going to be banished, exiled. And he's like, okay, I accept. Everyone in this family is so loving. That's why it's so pure. It's like love over evil, light over darkness. It demonstrates Ex- Except that. for the youngest wife. So there's like a lot of layers to the story where at every point in the story, he could have gotten angry or upset, but it just shows that you know, love leads the way. Anyways, so he leaves, but the second brother is like, I'm coming with you. Like, there's no way you're going into this forest by yourself. And also Rama's wife goes with him as well. Sita is her name. They go off. So there's a lot that happens in this kingdom in the 14 years. But what's really amazing is back at home, even though the youngest wife wanted her youngest son to be the king, he refuses. He's like, I would never do that to my brother. He takes a pair of his shoes and puts it on the throne and is like, this is a placement for my brother when he comes back from exile to take the crown again. Isn't that the sweetest thing ever? So there's just like so much love going on. So basically. It sounds a little toxic. Uh, I'm just kidding. It is. And it's like a huge book. It's like series of books. But anyway, and I'm probably murdering the story a little bit. <laughs> but in this forest, and we're wrapping up here, in this forest, Sita gets kidnapped by this demon. And essentially, Rama goes and rescues her, destroys the demon, and their homecoming back to the kingdom after 14 years and this whole like rescue mission mm-hmm. is Diwali. It's oh, a, I love that. Yeah, because he's coming back. So they light up the entire city with lights and it's like a celebration of his return. Wow, I love that. Yeah. That was was probably more like five minutes, but... No, that was a really good story (laughs) of selflessness, but um, Mm -hmm. that youngest wife, that youngest wife. But it also shows you the power of persuasion because it wasn't ever in her own mind, but it's like some, a touch of evil can really turn you into something that you're not, just like those friends of yours. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I was like, you're like, damn. I was like, well, well I meant well. just that one. <laughs> so it was judgy friends of mine. <laughs> but honestly, <laughs> it is like really important who you surround yourself with because you start to take on some people's mannerisms. Yeah. And I'm like, I need to. It's just a reflective moment. (laughs) Anyways, so many lessons in this story. (laughs) So many lessons in this conversation. (laughs) I love that story about how like Mm -hmm. kindness should prevail in, Mm -hmm. you know, in unusual or bad circumstances too. Yeah. Like always act kindly, Mm -hmm. which, you know, that's a hard lesson. (laughs) Anna does not do that. (laughs) Oh, let's get into it. I'm so excited it's fall. So fall is my favorite season. I love the crisp, cool air, leaves changing colors, pumpkin spice lattes, and also just being able to wear cozy, soft sweaters. I got one from Quince recently. It's their Mongolian cashmere sweater, which is what they're really known for on social media. And I cannot believe that I got it for $50. It feels so luxe and is high quality. It should be priced way more. I love Quince. I started to get most of my sweaters and cardigans from there all because Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. They're able to do this because they partner directly with top factories and cut out the cost of the middleman, which passes the savings on to us. 
And Quinn's only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices. I love that about Quince. Get cozy in Quince's high quality wardrobe essentials. Go to quince.com slash out of the pods for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C dot com slash out of the pods to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash out of the pods. I am so excited that the season's over. <laughs> I don't even know where to start, but you know, we have LIB alumni showing up. Which interesting group of people put together. Well, what I heard from one of them, the LIB alumni group that was at the reunion, is mm-hmm. they tried to focus on people who were already based in LA where the reunion was filmed. And I think it was for budget reasons. Like so, this season. Yeah. For this season. I think it was different last season, but also it was a huge season with only one married couple. So I think they brought a lot of the married couples back. Listen, um, I get it. It's end of year. You know, yeah. you've, <laughs> you've used all the funds. Yeah, for the yeah. Year. Nobody told me this, but this is my theory. This was not a um, very big watched season compared to the other seasons, even though I don't think it was the worst season. I think that place is saved for either season five or us. (laughs) (laughs) Agreed. (laughs) But it wasn't a very popular season when it comes to how many people watch this season. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if that had to do with like the budget too, where they're like, the season isn't that popular. So we're going to not spend a lot of money on, you know, flying people like LIB alumni for the reunion. Yeah, it was a group of the most random. Yeah, but Bliss and Zach were already in town. Yeah. Um, I think Nancy might have been as well. And then Marshall, AD, Jessica are based in LA. Yeah, so I, it I didn't know Jessica was. Yeah, yeah, she's based somewhere in California. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was really good seeing them. I was actually shocked that there were so many comments that people didn't recognize Jessica from season one. Like mm-hmm. they were like completely forgot yeah. who she was. I also hear people when they say, stop bringing back old cast <laughs> from different seasons of Love is Wine from previous seasons because they wasted so much time that they could have talked to the actual cast. AD got so much screen time, regardless of if she's on Perfect Match or not. Like, I don't know if that was necessary. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was very obvious. I mean, we can confirm she is on Perfect Match season three. I thought it was weird that they asked her her relationship status. And, <laughs> She's so you cool. know, at this point, everyone knows or have seen that she is dating Ollie from Love is Blind UK. And people are alleging that they met on Perfect Match season three, which I think is the case. She's also posting that she's in London. So it makes sense, right? Like they're yeah. dating. But I don't know. It just kind of made it like weird and obvious yeah it was a uh, it was weird but also- i liked seeing them i actually feel the opposite i know people are like oh it's weird that they bring yeah. like former cast back i personally like seeing former cast members being brought back because it's kind of funny when you see their reactions yep. um and like where they're able to ask a question or <laughs> share like what they're thinking but they didn't really do that yeah. for this reunion it kind of felt really random that they were there like the questions that they were asking these former cl- cast members the like the montage or compilations that they would play for mm-hmm. these former cast members it just felt like a weird break or pause within the reunion yeah. itself so I don't know it and it just... was like really weird transitions it's kind of like transitions you and I do sometimes on this podcast yeah, and we're like, like well, well speaking of <laughs> evil <laughs> I know it was like a, a powerpoint I was dying at those transitions but I love obviously seeing Marshall's reactions to everything. I think his facial expressions sent me. But I have to say, poor Taylor's parents, because the fact that they put them through this entire reunion, I feel so bad for them because I'm like, I guarantee you they do not give a f F about the tea that is happening. They're just like, Jesus. And you know, they barely show Taylor and Garrett too, minus Taylor's like nasty looks that were <laughs> happening. She, You know she wanted to say so much, oh. but she's like, I'm just gonna just be quiet. Her body language was like this to Garrett. So it was like, oh, I wanna say something, but I can't. <laughs> I do also feel bad for her parents. If you guys don't know, this reunion was actually six hours long and they edited it down to an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. So there's so much 
that happened and it was such a long filming session. Like we only filmed our reunion for probably four hours, but I can't imagine six hours. No, I know that the reason why Taylor's mom cried at the end was because she's like, I'm so happy this is over. <laughs> she's like, I just want to go like, home. She's like, I could care less about this drama. <laughs> and she was, my daughter didn't say a peep during this yeah. reunion. <laughs> she's like Marissa talking about fucking Ramses, like I'm out. <laughs> and saying that, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> she's Literally. like, oh, what happened? Because <laughs> you know Asian <laughs> you know, Yeah, you know Fong was like uh she's like, she's oh, like this, this is awkward this is not how i thought it would go well let's get into taylor and garrett i would love to know what you thought of garrett's new look because a lot of people are talking about it on the internet <laughs> i think garrett's style and his newfound love for fashion was not on the bingo card like let's face it it's because of taylor even if he doesn't want to say that but i personally didn't love the pattern of his outfit it just wasn't my style but then i saw a tiktok natalie and he was talking about like fit check i think he literally just posted it yesterday or today and garrett. he said the fabric yes garrett he said the fabric was like old indian fabric and i was like newly i'm a fan <laughs> I was like, yep, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. <laughs> but she's no. like, I didn't like it. Oh, Indian fabric? 100%. Uh, I, love it. I approve. <laughs> but, anyways, I didn't like the pattern of it. Yeah, I feel like the suit jacket was a little bit too big. I don't know what look I prefer, like old Garrett, but I'm not a fan of like the buzz cut look, you know? Same. And people are just saying he looks like a Disney prince. He kind of does look and like a Disney prince. I was like, yes which I'm a fan of, but also, yes, you know? <laughs> also, I do have to say, I mean, obviously fashion is an expression of self, self-expression. So, I mean, look at us. <laughs> We're like, oh, I didn't like the suit jacket. And meanwhile, listen, I had to be comfortable today, as always. Same. I think I wear this like every other week, so. <laughs> I know, I was like, uh, I definitely wear these pants like five times a week. <laughs> you know what's funny? I think back to our reunion. Did you get your hair and makeup done for reunion? Mm, or get a stylist? I think I got my hair blown out at like, dry bar oh, okay <laughs> and then i did my own makeup yeah and i think most of us did th th i think about and then that. it changed i think that they're starting to give budgets to the cast to get their hair and makeup done but they didn't for us like yeah. i had to pay everything out of pocket i was thinking about that because i i honestly think the cast slayed with the looks and oh, they yeah. looked amazing and i think back to ours and i went back and looked at a picture and i was like oh yeah i definitely did my own hair and makeup for that yeah and I just feel like the outfits are getting more fashionable. Like, I'm not going to lie. I loved Taylor's outfit. It's mm -hmm. not something I would personally wear. And yeah. I know people are saying, like, I didn't like the top, but it's very, like, fashion forward. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. It's And yeah. everyone did. Yeah, everyone's makeup was amazing. And then I did think about our reunion, too. And I was like, we were just, like, in a very different ball game where, yeah. you know, we just we weren't thinking like that. Yeah, the show wasn't that, I mean, it was big, but it wasn't like as big as it is now. And like, I think people don't see that everything is ends up online like it is now, you know, yeah. also. But yeah, I think about that and I'm like, holy crap, like I didn't even barely did my nails. <laughs> I think it really started so with season three. You know how the Love is Blind Netflix Instagram page now posts pictures of people's outfits? Yes before the reunion, they never did that for us. I was so thinking about that. It, it was just, it's a different ball game now. And I kind of like it. Like yeah. I like being able to now like see what people are wearing, how they've had these glow ups. It's kind of fun to watch. And also, you know, what's interesting. Obviously we didn't have like the live audience. Yeah. Which is, I would love, I'm sure every single member of the live audience had to write, like sign an NDA because I would love to know what happened in the six hours that wasn't shown. <laughs> I know, I know. But, but let's yeah. go back to Taylor and Garrett because Oosh. again, not much was said about them. They were very, very quiet. My my thoughts are that they reached out to former it couples from the previous seasons and then they were given the advice like stay out of all the drama happening. And I think Garrett wanted to, but he felt the need to like stick up for Nick at times or like say something. But mm. Taylor definitely listened to that advice. She was not involved. You knew she knew more because she was so tense at yeah. certain during certain conversations when the camera panned to her. Mm -hmm. I think it really started with Alex and Brennan. They started giving the advice of like, stay quiet, stay out of it because of the backlash they received from their reunion, getting involved in the Cole stuff. And yeah. I think that advice has been passed down. Yeah. From a couple to a couple. You know, it's also um, with this couple, it was interesting because obviously 
even without them saying much, you could tell whose side they were kind yeah. of on. Maybe not Taylor, but obviously Garrett. Garrett is very much supporting Nick and Tyler. So uh, you could kind of tell even though he like said the least <laughs> out of everyone. But yeah, Taylor's body language was just so, so anxiously tense. But I'm really happy that they stayed out of it because it just why add your two cents yeah. when you have Marissa and <laughs> the rest of them like, you know, I, I agree. In. I feel like Alexa and Brennan's edit changed during the season three reunion, right? When they went after Cole and they got so much backlash for it. Mm -hmm. And I really feel like after that, people are like, let's stay out of it because <laughs> we don't want the risk of changing our edit. Like, look at Marissa. Marissa is getting so much backlash for defending Hannah. And I'm not gonna lie, like I really liked Marissa in the latter half of the season. And then for me, the reunion kind of changed like her character arc. Like uh, I did not like yeah. her as much. But Marissa, oh my God. You know I was a fan of Marissa the entire season. I loved her energy. A shout out to Nick Lachey for saying that to Marissa, by the way. Just that was very sweet. It was very sweet. Um, but the way she was defending Hannah, I was like, honey, why are you doing this? Like, I think she just really was so angry with her own situation that she had to take it out on someone else. But like, I don't know. I look, I think it was Marissa trying to practice being an attorney. Ah, wait, can I? OK, so Marissa actually posted something this morning. OK, and I wanted to read it to you. She says, I show up every day as my authentic self. I make mistakes, say the wrong thing, and sometimes stand by those who may not deserve it because authenticity matters more to me than curating an image. At the reunion, I came without resentment towards Ramses or anyone else. For those who expected me to go off, know that I will always handle things my way. We've had many conversations since our breakup, and I wish him well. Okay. Um, and then she goes into Hannah and Nick. <laughs> so she says... As for Hannah and Nick, I've never justified her treatment of him. Watching the season, I was as surprised as anyone. On stage, I addressed a specific comment Nick made about her, a fact I know firsthand. Nick's dishonesty doesn't excuse Hannah's verbal abuse. Those are two separate issues. She's so right about that. I agree. Anyways, and then she just goes on to say, when her behavior was raised, I told her she was wrong, something I've done privately in interviews and on stage. I don't control the final edit and won't be blamed for other silence. She said, I'm no bully. I simply said what others wouldn't say when the camera started rolling. Why do I feel so much better when I have a really good manicure? There's got to be some sort of science behind that. I hate going to the nail salon, so I'm starting to do my manicures at home with Olive and June's Manny system. It has everything you need for a salon quality manicure in one box. Salon grade tools designed just for DIY, and you're able to customize it with your choice of six polishes. And this polish doesn't chip and lasts seven days or more. I love doing my manicures and pedicures at home because it saves me so much money. With Olive and June's Manny System, my manicures break down to just $2 a manicure. And also, there's a huge difference between how I used to do my nails when I did them myself and how they look now with the Manny System. Mine look and feel like I got them done at the salon without even making an appointment or wasting the time going to one. So visit oliveandjune.com slash out of the pods for 20% off your first system. That's O L I V E A N D J U N E dot com slash O U T O F T H E P O D S for 20% off your first system. The thing is, I get what Marissa is saying, but she went so hard on Nick and didn't have that same energy for Hannah. Yeah. And she didn't seem like she was treating it as two separate issues during the reunion because. I actually watched the whole Nick, Hannah, Marissa, Katie, <laughs> Monica situation twice. Vanessa. <laughs> and um, what Marissa keeps saying is like, Hannah was a bitch or Hannah was mean, but Nick, you did this. It should be then Hannah was mean and Nick did this. But mm -hmm. she's 
the way she's talking about it is like she's trying to justify Hannah's behavior if you actually watch the scene. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, that's why you're getting backlash, Marissa. Okay, I kind of understand what Marissa was saying and I kind of see both sides because she was like, Hannah, you were insecure so you were being a bitch to Nick and Nick, you were being fake. And I totally get that. But even if Nick... 10 days before, whatever, two weeks before, wrote in his notes, like, I want to be the most famous person <laughs> on Love is Blind. Or, you did it, Nick. Yeah. You are. <laughs> <laughs> or called Hannah a grenade and said she was underwhelming. It still does not justify the way Hannah treated Nick on camera. At least Nick had the decency to do it in private. I know. At least Nick was smart enough to do it behind the scenes and act attracted to Hannah during the show. If anything, Nick played the game well. Exactly. Hannah didn't. Hannah, like, honestly, it was really funny when Hannah was like, I was direct on screen. Like, I was honest. At least I was honest on screen. And you did this behind my back. And I was like, yeah, Hannah, because Nick is smart and yeah. knows how to get a better edit than you. Yeah. Wasn't Hannah also the one who on screen was like, didn't like what Nick looked like and said she was underwhelmed? So why is she being so hypocritical? I will say calling her a grenade is crazy. And I actually <laughs> do believe that he did call her a grenade. Mm -hmm. The fact that nobody could really come to his defense, like everyone was very quiet. He was no, deflecting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was definitely lying yeah. about what he probably said about her behind the scenes. So I thought grenade meant when you fart in your hand and throw it in someone's face. Of course you did. Of course you thought that. <laughs> so when but like, well, how could you not think of Pauly D in Jersey Shore? I just, I never watched Jersey Shore. I think I watched like a few episodes growing was, up, but I never watched like a full season of Okay, of that, that is show. the OG reality TV. I, baby. I know, I, I know. There was like no... There was nothing you couldn't do on Jersey Shore. It's insane. I was snooky for Halloween. That <laughs> <laughs> and I was literally perfectly snooky. <laughs> was it better than my Marge Simpson costume? Absolutely not. <laughs> Marge Simpson beats everything out of wait. the park. <laughs> Side note, I posted um, a TikTok in IG Reel of me dressed as Marge Simpson. <laughs> and it was the pod besties who were like, are you okay? <laughs> Like, what is happening? Oh, I love the pod besties who were like, I had to pause the episode and go run and see if you posted it. And, and they're died. like, uh, they're like, uh, we thought it was just going to be like a regular Marge Simpson costume. And they're like, why did you go so far with it? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. Because it's you. I was like, I really don't you know. You love a cosplay. I, I do love a good cosplay. Um, but anyways, going back to grenade, you guys don't know what grenade means. Um, so You looked it up. Yes. I went to Urban Dictionary <laughs> and it did cite Jersey Shore. So that's where where the term got popular or like yeah. where it came from. Mm -hmm. But a grenade is an ugly girl always found in a group of hotties. And the ugly girl has to be like hit on or like jumped on as Urban Dictionary says for this because if she doesn't get hit on like the group of her hot friends won't get hit on. I don't even understand that. But it's yeah. essentially like a guy saying like, OK, like jump on that grenade. Yeah. You got to take one for the team. Yeah, it's like, exactly. It's and also if you just think about it, like in layman's terms, too, it's just basically like she's the unattractive one, which is really really mean to say it is especially Beyond because he's not even he's not even italian or from jersey shore he's cuban <laughs> from dc how do you know he's cuban because his mom is cuban oh yes 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 <laughs> yes that's why he lives at home there's so much that happened in their storyline that i forgot that that detail okay about his ethnicity it's okay it was kind of hidden <laughs> dp remembers it all let me tell you no <laughs> um when i read that i was like that is so so mean to say about someone behind their back, regardless of like what Hannah said to him. It's the fact that he said that. Here's the thing. I don't think that there's anything wrong not being attracted to your partner after reveal happens. Mm -hmm. I know Shane wasn't attracted to me. I wasn't attracted to Shane, but we still lied on camera afterwards after our reveal that like we, we liked how each other looked. Like I called Shane like hot or good looking and Shane's like, she has the best smile in the world. But the reason why we acted like that is because we we're like, they're not bad looking and we might change our mind when we see them again in Mexico in two yeah, days. Yeah, and not to mention the cameras do play a, a role. Like yeah. people know how to act and know how to get a good edit. That is, as the seasons go on, that's going to happen. And what 
kind of is like annoying about the situation and they're trying to make Nick look so bad and like try to come for him. Even when Steven was like, yeah, the grenade thing did happen. He was talking right after the reveal. It wasn't like it was after they were living together or, you know, being intimate. So feelings change. Like you said, like your feelings changed about Shane and vice versa. It's the same. Like feelings can change over time. Your level of attractiveness to your partner can increase. Yeah. As feelings grow, you know. But regardless of Nick calling her a grenade or rating her five out of 10, which Mm -hmm. is horrible, like really horrible. I think that if Hannah was a better person, everyone would be like on Nick right now. I agree. But what I hated about the situation and why it didn't really change anything for me in terms of how I view Hannah is because you could tell she was like loving this moment that Nick was getting called out because she thought it was taking away from the backlash and accountability that she should be taking. I feel like the way she was smirking during this conversation, I feel like she was feeling like I'm justified in the way yes. I treated Nick. And that's what pissed me off because I was like, she, you could tell she keeps saying like, I know I'm a bitch. I know I'm direct. She's very aware, but she has no reason to change because she feels like she's justified. I completely agree. She felt so vindicated because she was holding on to her own grenade of the whole famous thing. <laughs> and she's like, I can't wait to use that at reunion. I know. First of all, it makes her look so bad that she revealed the whole famous goal thing because it means that she invaded his privacy by going exactly. through his journal or diary or whatever. And I'm like, Hannah, no self-awareness on her end. That doesn't make you look good. And also... You know how I'm a huge proponent of this. It's not what you say. It's how you say it. No, it's also about what she says all the time. (laughs) Like Hannah is literally. It's so frustrating to watch her. She has no self-awareness. I actually think that she has really high narcissistic tendencies. Because even when Vanessa Lachey asked her, like, do you feel any remorse? She goes, I know I'm direct. Like, she doesn't apologize. No. And the things I say were all true, but, you know, it should have been said differently. <laughs> and like, I'm like, why are you using the word direct? Like being direct and being mean are two very different things. Being direct and deliberately trying to make someone feel horrible and putting them down are two very different things. And I don't think she gets it. Yeah. And that's so sad that regardless of how much backlash she gets and how many people tell her like she was wrong, she will never get it. And this was an eye-opening moment for me because I felt like Hannah was trying to spin it like she acted this way because Nick made her feel insecure or like mm-hmm. she knew what Nick was saying behind her back. So she was kind of like projecting mm-hmm. her insecurities onto him. But then Marissa says, Hannah's been mean to me too. And Ashley even says on the side, like, I've called her out on it too. And I was like, oh, this is just her. She's just a mean person. I clocked that as soon as I heard it. And I was like, why would you want somebody who's not a nice person in your life? And it comes back to what we were talking about earlier in this episode. Like, you do not want to surround yourself with people who honestly make you look bad and don't come to your defense and are just mean to other people around you. Like it changes who you are as a person. And I lost my mind when Hannah was trying to imply that she was acting this way on screen because of her own insecurities. And it's, it's a, yes, I agree. It's a projection of her insecurities, but if you knew behind the scenes that he called you grenade or was underwhelmed with how you looked why not just call him out on screen instead of being so mean to him yeah it just doesn't add up and it makes me feel like she found out that news like later or yeah probably after filming and she's just using it as an excuse now yeah exactly and and can we please talk about why she brought up the dms that he's been sending to other women um last time i checked he's single why can't he do that yeah and i was like what do you Like, what are you talking about? Like, who cares what he does? Like, it's very weird. Even when she says to Nick, like, why have you been liking mean comments about me on your Instagram? It's like, why are you even checking that, Hannah? Like, go figure out how you're going to change and be a better person. She just has no Mm self-awareness. And it really sucks that she came out of that reunion. Like, yes, I'm direct. I'm a bitch, whatever. But like, Nick deserved that. Like, I really think that's what she was thinking during the reunion and also thinks now like she is not sorry for the person she is and i was like wow you have major self-reflection to do and i i don't know i just feel like someone's got to tell her like someone and i i think people in her life want to tell her but they're she's so proud and kind of like has such a big ego and is so scary (laughs) scary. that she'll never take the feedback no and that's another thing is 
you would think that at this reunion she would have been held accountable for all of the things that were said like the fact that she said i changed you into a man from a boy to a man whatever she said there's just so many things that could have been addressed at this reunion I and know. maybe they were and it was cut out yeah but regardless we didn't see it so in my opinion it wasn't said <laughs> yeah there is no one in this universe that I love more than my sweet soul dog, Pixel. He's 16 now, which means I need to make sure he's getting the best nutrients and is healthy, which is why I love Sundays for Dogs. It's fresh dog food that contains 90% meat, 10% superfoods, and 0% synthetic nutrients or artificial ingredients. It's also super easy to store and serve because it requires no refrigeration. I love seeing Pixel when I go over to your place. He's mostly napping, but I do know that it makes you feel really good when you give him good quality food, and he loves it. When you start a subscription with Sundays, you'll automatically get 20% off and free shipping on every reorder. You can cancel or pause your subscription anytime with our 100% satisfaction guarantee. You can get 40% off your first order of Sundays. Go to sundaysfordogs.com slash outofthepods or use code outofthepods at checkout. What I noticed is Hannah has trouble saying sorry because when Katie asked Hannah, like, is there weight to your words when you said you don't trust me? I feel like when a friend says that to you, you say sorry. You're like, mm -hmm. I'm so sorry yeah. that I said that about you mm -hmm. on national, an international TV show that's very popular. Yeah. That I also exaggerated slash lie that you were calling my fiance hot. Like mm -hmm. that obviously didn't happen. <laughs> but instead, like, you know, Hannah's acting weird. She goes, like, I of course you do. Like, I don't know why the freak I said that. It's like, just apologize, Hannah. But that's when I realized like, wow, Hannah is very immature. And again, I think it comes down to kind of like potential narcissistic tendencies because of her inability to apologize. Yeah, I mean, she screams that she has self-awareness and she says that, but I don't think that she has that because she's just unable to like regard have a regard for other people's feelings in a sense and i absolutely died when vanessa who is marissa's mom is like why did she treat you like shit the whole year oh yes i died first of all i love her Marissa's mom who knew I would be saying that yeah but same she is so real for that because she sees through Hannah's bullshit it was interesting to me that she said that though because like based on this reunion and their interaction like Marissa and Hannah are so close and they're besties especially with Katie as well I guess they're like the three amigos <laughs> but that's what confused me I was like oh Marissa's mom knows what's up because she yeah. was able to see through Ramses and now she's able to see through Hannah at first I didn't pick up what Marissa's mom Vanessa whispered to Katie yeah. but yeah that's what the internet is saying is like she said something like she made you feel like shit for an entire year and that is horrible mm -hmm. that is horrible of Hannah the fact that she made Katie feel so guilty and here's the truth now and yet Hannah still can't apologize maybe she apologized like privately to Katie like I'm sorry yeah. but like she wasn't able to apologize on a public platform yeah I don't know it's it I've lost a lot of respect for Hannah she is like to me the first character I've seen on the show that I could really say is a true true mean girl mm. with no remorse and no self-awareness at least Irina and even Micah from season four you know a lot of people called them mean girls um of the love is blind franchise like they were able to apologize yeah they could reflect back on their behavior and say, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, but Hannah can't do that. Like mm -hmm. Hannah, I feel like it takes a lot for Hannah to say, I'm sorry. And now I'm just making assumptions, but I feel like you can really tell the person Hannah is just by the way she acted during this reunion and all throughout this season. Yeah, she doubled down. Yeah, but as AD would say. <laughs> um, I actually don't think Marissa and Katie are that close to Hannah anymore because Obviously, the cast was posting on social media as they're watching this reunion episode from their own homes. Mm -hmm. And Katie and Marissa watched it together, but mm -hmm. Hannah didn't watch it with them. And she they're all based with, in the same city. She was with Leo and Brittany. Yeah. So yeah. Leo got his um, pasta and steak. <laughs> That was a crazy analogy. I was like, I, I get it, but I don't. No. I still want to stick to Vanessa, Marissa's mom. So can mm -hmm. we get into Marissa and Ramses? Yes, please. Oh, my goodness. There's not much to say, and I'm going to have a hot take, and you're going to have to tell me what you think. Okay. But 
right now the internet hates Marissa so much that they're like, Ramses, I understand why you left her. And I think I that is not- I've seen those comments. I don't like that take, but I do have to say, I do think like what else could have could Ramses have done? Like he only got a few weeks to kind of get to know Marissa and he's allowed to change his mind and at least he didn't take it to the altar and hurt her at the altar or carry the relationship on and date and figure out later and hurt her later. You know what I mean? So, I mean, like, do I like Ramses? No, but do I appreciate him for doing what he did and breaking up with Marissa? Yes. And that's why I feel like Marissa didn't have much to say to Ramses. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was thinking, especially after Marissa's mom says she's very thankful that Ramses called it off and did the right thing and even thanked him mm -hmm. for doing so because she's all like Marissa would have carried that relationship because she's right. If Ramses didn't call it off, like Marissa would have carried that relationship. Yeah. 100%. And so I think it all worked out for the best. I did like Ramses better after this reunion because I feel like he explains like what derailed their relationship better where he goes like her energy just overwhelmed me and I think now like I get it the way he explained it of like he just felt like there was like an imbalance in personalities and I get that as an introvert right like you guys even saw Shane and I on our season where I'm like you know, your energy kind of takes away from me. Like, I don't get energy from other people. It, mm. it actually drains me. So I was like, I get how that feels. I think, though, regardless of his edit on this reunion, like, I think back to the conversations that they had and how yeah. he does have a way of speaking to her that makes her just feel bad about herself. Yeah. So I'm yeah. just kind of like reminded of that still of like why I didn't take to Ramses during mm -hmm. this season. And it's it's just crazy. And you and I know this best is like there's so much footage missing. Yeah. And there's so much more to a relationship than what we see on screen that like it's hard for me to kind of judge on it, but you're right. Like I like him a lot more now that he was able to kind of speak his mind. If you're around the right people, they will feed your soul. You yeah. Know? And if you're around the wrong people, they will literally be energy vampires. And I've been around that a lot in my life and you can tell the difference. So I don't know. I feel like he's entitled to feel how he does. And that's why Marissa really couldn't go in on him so much. So she had to go in on Nick. <laughs> Yeah, she's like, let me she's like save this energy for the person that I really want to go after today. Um, and it was Nick was the target for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, yeah, you're right. Like nothing really to say. Ramses was a little mouse during this reunion. He was very quiet, mm. said what he needed to say. I, I feel like a lot was edited out. Again, this reunion was six hours long and only an hour and a half in the actual episode. So they might have addressed more and then you yeah. know just cut it out i am i'm proud of ramses for speaking up after a little few nudges from marissa but where he was like nick just take accountability for what you said and then nick is like well i did say i was underwhelmed <laughs> and i was like nick why but you they still can't make me hate you yeah i i know I it's like you. it's like one of those things where it's like which one is the lesser of the two evils and it's like mm, nick <laughs> they both are need some work but because honestly i actually I, I think the only issue, I know we're going back to Hannah and Nick, but <laughs> I think the only issue is that, yeah, like Nick might have been faking it and, you know, did things for a reality TV show, and maybe getting a good edit, but he didn't embarrass Hannah on the show. Yeah. Like between their two actions, I'm like, Hannah did way, way worse mm -hmm. because she really tried to embarrass Nick. And like he could have said a lot and he didn't. Regardless yeah. of what he was saying behind the scenes. Yeah. I which mean, were horrible, by the way. Like, I'm just putting it out there. But, like, between the two of them, <laughs> and they're two separate instances, and one doesn't justify the other. But, like, exactly. Hannah did so, so much worse. Um, and also, like, Hannah, you quit your job to do a reality TV show. So, yeah, it is yes. kind of weird that he wrote in a journal that he wants to be the most famous person on Love is Blind. That is freaking weird to I mean write. he's manifesting I love to but see still it still <laughs> really weird to write that before you go into filming like it's just I don't know it's like weird yeah but still like the fact she quit her job because yeah. she knew that not only is there a chance she might find love but she knew she could also become famous too and look it did happen just in not in the in the way she thought. Yeah, and happen. only one of the two is signed to an agency. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. 
I want to take a moment to thank my parents for their unconditional love and support my entire life. This month is all about gratitude. And along with the people I just shouted out, there's another person we don't get to thank enough, ourselves. Sometimes it's hard to remind ourselves that we are trying our best to make sense of everything. And in this crazy world, that is not easy. So this is your reminder to send some thanks to the people in your life, including yourself. I also want to thank someone in my life, my mom. She has been through a lot this past month, like the death of her mom, my grandmother, but she still finds the time to support me and my entire family. There's been lots of emotions lately, but therapy has really helped me learn positive coping skills. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and is designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Let the gratitude flow with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash out of the pods today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash out of the pods. Let's get into Monica and Steven. I... (laughs) His monologue. (laughs) You know what? I don't know how to feel about Steven. It's not positive feelings, but he's such an interesting person to me. I just... I just... (laughs) Don't understand him. Yeah, I was dying at the picture of the sleep study because up, you proved me wrong. I know. I was like, oh, he actually was at a sleep study. Can we see the timestamp of the picture though? Because that could have been taken any night. Yeah, but they confirmed it was that night, and I was like, then why was he drunk? Why? Why is he drunk texting? (laughs) Probably his doctor from the sleep study is watching the show and been like, this guy was drunk. (laughs) Like, doesn't he know that's not how? Sleep studies go. uh, Sleep apnea (laughs) invalid. I know. (laughs) But um, I don't know, man. I was waiting for Monica just to fry him because I feel like this man just has a lot to say. This man. I don't know. Like, he just... Everything he says, like, I don't believe and I want to believe him. You know? Like, I just think that everything he says is, like, not real. Even down to the story about the Instagram person that he knew for years that just randomly messaged him out of nowhere and then he never messaged her after that. I think that's bullshit. He wants everyone to feel bad for him, even though he was the one who messed up. Like where he's complaining how nobody wants to believe me. Like nobody wants to hear my side of the story. Um, It's because like we already know what happened. Like you emotionally cheated on Monica. Mm-hmm. Like that's it. What we do want to know, what we want to hear about is what those text messages they said. Retweet. And if you're not going to share that because you don't remember, <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, what else do we need to know? Like, what's your side of the story? I know. I really want to know what the kinks are. And that's depressing for me <laughs> because I'm like, why? Why do you want to know? <laughs> I know. Like, why do I, why I really do wa- I want to know? I really want to know. See, I don't want to know. Like, I don't think about it. But when it's brought up, I'm like, I want to know what it said. Yeah. And she's like, it was paragraphs. <laughs> and I was like, oh, but uh uh-huh, paragraphs never, of what? <laughs> they never had a conversation after that ever again. <laughs> I think because like, I don't have any kinks or fetishes that I'm just like, like, what are we talking about here? Like a toe fetish or like, <laughs> are we going a little there bit further? There is no way Monica was up in arms about things and it was a toe fetish. <laughs> but I thought it was really funny when Steven brings up the fact that he wrote an apology letter to Monica's parents and Monica's like, oh, Steven, like I knew when you wrote that letter and gave it to my parents, like you were going to bring it up at the reunion. I, that was a really good impression of Monica because that's exactly what she sounded like. She's just like so over She's it. Like, she like, she doesn't, be- she does not believe Steven. No, she was like, as soon as I got the letter, I knew you were going to bring it up today. <laughs> I was dead. She's like, Steven. <laughs> I'm glad that they went to dinner and hashed things out because honestly, may that type of love never find me or Monica. <laughs> I love when she clarified like it was a dinner when he says like we went on a date two weeks after and she's like, no, no. That's why it's like hard to believe Steven because it just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, he's very colorful in the way he speaks. Yeah, know? and obviously he misspeaks like Hannah too. Like we've seen <laughs> Hannah misspeak and obviously he does as well. So it's hard to really believe him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know when there's too many details in a story, you know someone's making it yeah. up. Like half the time that's that's how i felt about steven in this situation he was like over explaining things yeah. and i was like oh it just doesn't add up so you could tell there was like very harsh cuts and yeah. so i feel like it was a longer segment from what i heard 
I would have loved to hear more, but I also feel like there wasn't a lot to really talk about. Like we've heard what already happened type of thing. Yeah, if we don't find out what's in the text, then let's just put this to rest. Let's wrap it up like Vanessa I love. Said. I love how Nancy asked. She's like, what was in the text messages? And her was, cute little voice. I literally was looking at Nancy's ears and I was like, do you have a headpiece in? Did they tell you to ask that question? Because Nancy's so sweet and innocent. No, I know. For her to ask that question. Oh my but, gosh. Okay, let's get into Alex and Tim next because I was exhausted from this conversation. Me too. For once in my life, I was happy when Vanessa was like, let's let's take this, you know, let's sidebar this conversation. I know. <laughs> I was so happy. When the season finished airing, I was more on Alex's side, mm-hmm. though, to be honest, I don't care about the situation enough to be on anyone's side. But like I was leaning more towards like Tim did something wrong, like during their breakup versus Alex. Mm-hmm. But like she had her faults too, right? And then I feel like after she clarifies some things during this reunion, like the hand over his mouth situation in Mexico, I feel like I was like really on her side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. I agree with you. I feel like Tim was kind of talking in circles when it came to like understanding his feelings and what happened with their breakup Mm -hmm. and their entire engagement. Whereas Alex was able to actually give specific facts about things that happened and how they made her feel and what like happened because of the situations that arise you know like she was able to kind of articulate it better and that's why i'm like okay i kind of exactly understand where alex is coming from the whole nap situation because she had to go bartend yeah right after that made complete sense to me and like yeah just like the feelings that transpired because of the actions like made more sense tim on the other hand he's just like talking in circles and talking without purpose if that makes sense and he just held on to a lot of animosity it felt like and not that it's not justified because i think he checked out literally the first time that alex called him out of his name and (laughs) called him a little ass bitch (laughs) which i was like well and covered his mouth or whatever i think he kind of was like okay i see her in a different light after that situation yeah and then she says that too she's like you told me you had doubts even though you asked my dad for his hand in marriage and i was like yeah this is like super confusing i kind of understand that situation because if you go back and watch and i didn't but i remember this but um tim was doing so much for her family like cooking cleaning like grilling for them making sure everything was good read the letter and then i think alex kind of just checked out whereas he had to like take care of everything afterwards and i think at that moment he was like this is not a partnership you're i'm your bitch boy (laughs) yeah but I just feel like he always had doubts and he shouldn't have done all of that. You know what I'm saying? He had doubts, but I think they got even deeper after Mm. the aftermath of the family situation. Because you know how that can happen. Yeah, for sure. I don't know. But that's just my take on it. But who knows? They just were not meant to be together. I know. Not compatible. I, I think the reason why I'm like leaning towards Alex and I can't. I can't figure out if it's again, it comes down to the fact that like she is just able to articulate what happened better and she's able to like justify her actions. And then you're like, okay, like that makes sense. Like I get why you needed to take that nap. And Mm -hmm. I get why you put your hand over his mouth because he was being so loud and you just want to protect him. And like having been in her shoes, you're like, I know exactly what that feels like where you don't want producers to step in and like bring the cameras out. You want to like protect your relationship. Yes. So I was like, I totally get it. Mm -hmm. And also the fact that Tim is like, look, like, listen to me right now. Like, my voice carries. Like, I'm not a quiet person. It's like, that's not a justification for the way your tone, the level of your voice makes someone feel. If it seems like you're yelling, someone's going to perceive that as you being aggressive and yelling regardless of like if that's your intent or not like Mm -hmm. that's not an excuse to be like my voice carries no i yeah i he wasn't able to like kind of put meaning behind any of his actions and that's why it was really hard to be on his side throughout this entire thing and like honestly i was on tim's side a little bit more i was leaning more on his end of it because i was like oh like is alex just not considerate towards her fiance yada 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 but after this reunion, I'm I'm definitely on Alex's side. I feel like I understand where her head was at. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, li- really funny how Brittany was like doing the side comments to Alex. Was like, he's talking in circles again. <laughs> and like just saying things. I was like, oh, Brittany. <laughs> Brittany's 
I was like, kind oh, she knows. I was like, she knows what's going on. Yeah, and she was like sticking up for Alex. I was like, oh, they're they're close. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. The, uh. the thing is, even though the girls seem close, you could tell there's kind of like divides in their group. Like Taylor doesn't seem close to any of the girls. Yeah. And then Monica and Alex seem close. It seems like when they talked about how they hang out, it was like really just them and another group of like pod squad girls. Yeah. And then obviously Marissa, Hannah and Katie, but it seems like their relationship is kind of broken. You know, it's so interesting because you hear from your friends what happens in situations when filming. Yeah. And then it's another story to see it and an edited version, I will say, to see it all happen. And it's hard because you kind of change your feelings about people totally. especially also how they act on social media afterwards it's like there's so many layers to a friendship especially in this technology ridden state a reality in. tv show friendship yes. too yes it's like there's so many layers to it and so it's hard to act right and it's it's like you have to be careful of how you are on screen when there's millions of people watching I don't know. So I kind of see it. My opinion also changed for Leo during this reunion. I know. Who would think that he would be my favorite person to see? It was like a fr breath of fresh air seeing him. Yes. He had one of the best apologies in Love is Blind reunion history. Like, I liked him so much after the reunion, along with Brittany. Like, I love that they are friends. I know. And they talk on the phone for hours. I know. And <laughs> at least an hour. And I was like, About wow, you guys are like, like, legitimately friends yeah and talking about their dating life and everything i thought that was really cute i'm happy they brought them back you can tell the showrunners are really like listening to the audience and looking at social media to see what to incorporate into these reunions are they though they kind of are i don't know i think the questions were asked but the answers weren't harped on if that makes sense I think that the right questions were asked, but it was edited out of this reunion. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't figure out watching this. I know that someone from this season is on Perfect Match season three. And I was like, is it Nick? Is it Ramses? Is it Hannah? Or is it Brittany? Those are who I think may be on Perfect Match season three, along with AD, of course, and Ollie and Freddie from Love is Wine UK. And who knows? Maybe someone from Love is Wine season eight. Like, I'm not sure. Um, but... When Britney was being coy about her relationship, like AD, I was like, is it Britney mm. that just came back from Perfect Match season three filming and like, you know, got into a relationship from that? Like, you know, I wasn't sure because like, why would she be coy about it? You know? Yeah. But also Perfect Match a success rate for relationships is not that high. <laughs> yeah. But they just finished filming. So yeah. the, by, by the time that they're filming this reunion, they're like just a few weeks after mm -hmm. Perfect Match. And that's kind of how long the relationships from Perfect Match go. They're just like true. a few weeks or a few months. That's so. true. I don't know. It so, could be both Hannah and Brittany. True. I think it's one or the other, but like, I don't know. No one's talking about it in our Love is Blind world, so I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, nothing to say about them except that Leo changed my perception. I really like that Leo took accountability, whether it was genuine or not, or he's just kind of like following, you know, based on the backlash um on the internet but he did it right he did it he did what every villain needs to do and honestly like i think he was v being very sincere because there's a lot of villains who go on there and apologize and it's not sincere and you can tell yeah like he seemed very sincere about it and yeah he was just a breath of fresh air loved it and yeah. loved to see him well let's talk about one of the internet's most controversial villain of the season tyler uh, and of course ashley I knew that they were going to be the way they were on this reunion. Yeah. They were going to have each other's backs. And watching it, I actually liked their responses because it was very PR response. Because we knew they weren't going to get into the whole yeah. situation with the kids. No. And honestly, after having this conversation, I literally just want to be like, if Ashley knows and she's happy and she supports her man, I just want to be done with them. Yeah, to be honest, I'm over it now yeah. because am I surprised that Ashley is sticking by Tyler and also covering for him? No, mm -hmm. that's her choice to do that. I think what's really sad about this entire situation is the fact that Tyler is an absent dad to his three kids now. So it's just really, really sad. But I feel like not much could have been said there. Yeah. Like he made his choice. And the real sadness comes for like 
these three kids. Exactly. And I think we know that social media is a hard place to be especially when there's like a controversy like this happening and so i don't know i think we tend to dissect every little detail that we see on screen but there is something to say about a little bit of privacy when it comes to ashley and tyler's situation only because there's kids involved yeah i agree and i don't know how i would act if i were in their shoes but like telling social media or like the audience about every little thing I don't know it doesn't make sense and Ashley like was very eloquently speaking obviously she's hiding a lot of things but her just being like you know humanity can't like make sense of this situation because it's so unique and it truly is a unique situation but all I want to leave it at is I hope Tyler's happy I hope Ashley's happy but more importantly I hope his kids are happy there's really nothing to say she's sticking by him he said what he needed to say and it's sad I don't think we'll ever know like the full, full story, but I think what we do know is that like he was involved in those kids' lives and he was not being truthful when he said on the show that, you know, the kids don't know what I look like and they asked him about that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I guess it was like some cover up and Ashley knew the truth behind the scenes, which I actually don't think she did know. Yeah. Um, Because why would she ask that question if she knew? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. She she said she was like trying to cover and talk about it to be authentic, but I actually don't think she knew. And Mm -hmm. obviously now she's trying to cover for him. But um, yeah, 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 it's just a sad situation. Also, it was absolutely diabolical of... (laughs) Vanessa to ask them about their Christmas traditions because clearly the pictures that are circulating of Tyler are from Christmas with his kids yeah and I was like oh my gosh it was just like another awkward moment of like are we really just not going to address the elephant in the room and just continue on like everything is hunky-dory and yeah like address it once and then that's kind of it yeah but again like what else can you do? He said what he needed to say. Like, what are they going to bring the baby mom on? Like, yeah, no. no. (laughs) So they're going to protect the one of the two married couples from this season. Yeah. And hopefully they stand on business back in the the background. You know, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm sure we'll we'll see more of this stuff on social media. (laughs) Yeah. Also, what was really cool, but also new to these reunion episodes is um, they introduced three participants of the next season, season eight, which is in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. Yes. Also, I cannot believe it's already been five years since the show has aired. But February 14th, we are back with season eight, which is super exciting. But I think we talked about this right after. But I don't think any of those contestants that they announced are part of like the main cast no no i feel like they're probably part of like the broader cast Mm -hmm. like part of the 15 women 15 men but i don't think that they would show the main cast members like the couples that were actually chosen um to be seen on the show so yeah because there's just too much tea and there's three months and you guys pod besties and the rest of the internet is they are fbi sleuths yeah and they will find out every little detail (laughs) of everything happening (laughs) I know. But I was like, wait, this is so fun. The fact that they I don't know. I don't think they've ever announced a date so early of the next season nor participants ever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is so fun. And I can't believe it's coming back to the Midwest. Love is blind. Minneapolis, Minnesota. Here we come. I can't. I was hoping some of those contestants had some accents, but I didn't hear any. I know a little Minnesota. (laughs) Yeah, like a little. (laughs) It just makes me think about Fargo. I love Fargo, the TV show. Oh, I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh my gosh, you need to watch it. Then you also don't like TV. But um, (laughs) anyways, I'm really looking forward to it. But you can tell Love is Blind is becoming a legitimate huge franchise just because of I don't know, the production quality, everything is like just improving a lot. Even though this season was a little bit lackluster and I I really do think that the cast will be pretty forgettable after this, I do feel like you could tell the production quality is just getting better and better. It's so good. And the storylines are getting more unique and complicated. Yeah, which makes sense because every city is so different. But But I'm I'm excited. Back to the Midwest we go. So... 
we'll be recapping Love is Wine again in February. And I'm super, super excited. Yes. Valentine's Day. Yes. Well, let us know what you thought about this reunion episode. You could let us know on our Instagram page at Out of the Pods or comment on any of our TikToks, Instagram reels, or YouTube videos. And make sure you guys leave a review and subscribe. See you next Monday. And happy Diwali. <laughs> Bye.